My name is Mary Swander, and I'm the Poet Laureate of the state of Iowa. And I basically thought up this project with the School of the Deaf. I met um, some faculty from the School of the Deaf at the Poetry Out Loud conference in Des Moines. And the students were interpreting the poems. The deaf students got up and did an interpretation that just blew me away. And, you know, with um, signing and movement. And I thought, I'd love to do a project with him. Like what I would do is I would take what it is you're describing and I would literally just describe it. Just only description. Only description. Because you're really onto something really lovely on this last stanza, which I think is the central question of the poem or the central issue of the speaker, that I'm only one six Pennington, an island carrier of a German name. And I thought that, I thought this poem was lovely. I thought all of the flood imagery was really strong. I could see a lot of really lovely movement associated with it for this collaboration. From Golden Husk, the mother feeds to child. Meanwhile, legends crisscross the impassable ma marsh, warning of the plant that looks like snake stung, the ground nut lightning flower. They really worked hard on their poems to make them um, a cohesive collection of nature poems that could be easily interpreted. It's, that's not, not, that's not that easy easy to do in poetry. So they revised and reworked those poems and, um, and then we went over to the School for the Deaf and some of my students made a direct connection with some of those students that they really wanted you know, a specific person to interpret their poem. And daughters before you and I, only one mother and cottonwood feeds my horses full like summer sky. Wasichu, I am in you. Dry powder and gun where bison run free. White, white man, if I remember that correctly. And so there's some context with that. So this, this is sort of this ex kind of ecstatic experience and ecstatic prayer that's supposed to draw both uh, conflicting groups together, essentially, by, by evoking things that are non-human. So try to get those done this week. Because they're under a deadline too. And then we repost them back on. We repost them back here, and I'll put another okay. um, forum up for you, and try to get them done by Wednesday, so that if you need to polish them up, we'll finally be done on Friday. That would that would be great. One of the things I think that's out there often that that's not discussed or thought about is how the general public views deaf students, and because of that barrier that's their the, a language barrier, either through their own pronunciation of the words or through their ability or inability to hear words, often the general public feels that they need to dummy down their thoughts or they need to dummy down their sentences or they need, you know, so you have fully developed uh, uh, students or fully developed human beings that can understand anything and then they find themselves with a general public that's talking to them like they can't understand what they're saying. Because of that, I think that deaf students in general have developed incredibly uh, uh, positions of patience that most people wouldn't. I studied under Judith Hemshemeyer, who translated a lot of the Russian poet uh, Anna Akhmatova's poems. And in that kind of idea of translation is that an original poem in a language is a poem. When it's translated, though, it's an entirely new poem. And I believe that the same is true with a translation or interpretation 
of a written poem to a signed poem that it's on another realm that it's written and delivered i guess it's delivered in a different language so what's really neat about it is maybe even if you don't understand the other language in this case american sign language that you can kind of understand the style and voice of the poem that there's a certain flow and rhythm in it as well i mean interpretive dance perhaps could do it as well you you offered that as an example i think with sign it's a more direct correlation that they use sign as their language that they speak to one another i don't think there's really people out there who dance as language back and forth to one another so it was a neat opportunity to do that as well as we could bond on a common language too of of english being the common language and then having the um, audible and the signed to be the two subsets of that language i like that fullness in my stomach like mortar between bricks (laughs) at the end of the week I stood with the pastor in the sanctuary. He held a jug of olive oil, wanting to bless me with an anointing. I opened my hands to receive la mano de Dios. When I closed my eyes, I felt a full weight filling my palms, pulling down on my wrist. I pushed up against it. When I opened my eyes, I held nothing in them. Thank you. we're finding one word that might mean different things. And so it's, you know, we're working in a visual language. There may be one sign that has two or three or four different meanings. So, you know, you can go into great detail as, as into how you would describe a tree, for example, and that changes from person to person. So depending on the style, you might see bird, you might see the actual gloss sign for bird, um, but that's a great observation on your I tried to relate the poem with my communication and I tried to relate it to the natural world and how that relates with the words that are in the English language in every day into ASL. And I tend to communicate with that person depending on their preference. Like I can be more spoken English depending on if that's what they use. I try to match their voice intonation. The biggest challenge for me was, well, first of all, figuring out what the author was trying to express themselves and, you know, trying to read that and I'm trying to express it myself. And it's, sometimes it's difficult, it's difficult to, uh, like, match what they're feeling. Signing is very visual. You can see the poem come to life. The words come to life. And in just having it in written form in English, you know, it's very structured. And with signing, you can do it in five or six different ways to sign one word. So you get the opportunity to expand on that. And it's nice to be able to sign that. And with writing, there's limitations with words, with what words you can use. And with ASL, something can come up that has a, and that, with that meaning at that time, and you can have a sign to convey that, and it becomes a physical and gesture and a visual thing. <laughs>